Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be on our show, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Ashley Bell on the line, and he is a bank founder, impact investor, and filmmaker. Ashley, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam, thanks for having me. All right, Ashley. So, I mean, I could have read your bio much longer, but we're only, you know, we're only going to be recording. I think I got you for about 15 minutes or so today, man. I've been excited. I've been hearing your name in art circles from Chirag. Hey, um, I know you have an event that you're going to be doing with them and we're going to meet in person. Man, I'm I'm just finally, finally happy to meet you, man. Great to meet you. Yeah, same here. Just excited about you know, just digging deeper into the network. Uh, a lot of great people who support a lot of great things. So it's just like uh, exciting times. Fantastic. So, so Ashley, one of the things that the ways that we start this show each and every time is what we like to call our Mission Matters Minute. So we'll go with that. So Ashley, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Ashley, what mission matters to you? Helping people find a way of using their time, talent, and their treasure to stand at the intersection of doing good and doing well. How do you take the things that you care about most, which is your time, the the money that you make, and the talents that God has given you and stand at this intersection of creating wealth, but also making this world better? And we have a various you know outlets to do that. And I'm just excited about working with some fantastic people who are you know, legacy names of the greatest movements that have helped change this world to everyday people who just wake up every day and try to find a one way every day of just being better and doing better. That's awesome. Love having mission-based individuals on the line to share, you know, why they do what they do, how they're doing it, and really what we can all learn from that to to grow together. This is, we do consider Mission Matters a community. So first thing first, I'm excited about this event. If you could, uh, that you're doing with LightDAO, and, and I'll definitely be in the audience attending and listening. So Payam and his and his group, I mean, amazing community. Tell, tell me a little bit more about what attracted you to LightDAO and maybe their community overall. Well, you know, just a great group of folks, you know, and I think this is very appropriate because this is the week that we we started off this, you know, past week celebrating the federal holiday of Martin Luther King mm-hmm. Jr., where, you know, many of us had a day off and, you know, hopefully spent time with friends and family. And, and many of us in the mission of continuing to do the work of the legacy of Dr. King had a day on. Yeah. And we use that work to find some way of being impactful in our, in our communities. And for me, obviously, that hits personal to all my businesses since the youngest mm-hmm. daughter of Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Bernice A. King is my co-founder on all of my ventures. And so to be a founder that has uh, a woman co-founder who's not just a wow. woman, but she's a woman a woman king and someone who embraces that legacy and has our whole country stop for one day every year and reflect on what her father's greatest sacrifice was, was to give his life so that many of us would have the right to vote, have the right to have affordable housing have the right to have access to capital. And so all the things that we talk about give us a chance to really reflect on that. So I'm just excited and appreciative that mm. Payam and Sharad chose this week that we reflect to get a chance to talk about these ventures. Yeah, it's amazing. Tell me a little bit more about how you got started on this path. Because when I, when I read your, I mean, I, I read the resume, you know, the Civil Society Fellowship by the Aspen Institute. I mean, P3 Media, acquiring that, which has the number one Netflix show, The Recruit, which also features the same award-winning team that created Suits. I mean, quite an impeccable resume. Like, where'd all this begin for you? You know, it's been a journey. You know, I didn't start off doing any of this stuff. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to be helpful. <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm a lawyer, so at the end of the yeah. day, at, well, at the beginning of the day, uh, I started off representing poor people in poor places and just wow. wanted to be an impactful lawyer. And one thing that you learn about being talking to someone who lives in a jail cell yeah. is they got an incredible story about how they got there. Mm-hmm. And I think as a lawyer, my job was to tell their story, was to help them gain freedom through telling their story. And I think somewhere through that evolution, I end up here mm-hmm. in California still telling the stories <laughs> of the many times, the least, the last, and the left behind, but many times just the, the story of, of great heroes. And I, and I think that the work that Dr. King and I are doing with P3 is is, is broad. You know, we, we have fun shows like The Recruit, which are action-packed and, yeah. and tell the great stories of, you know, what it's like to be just a kid in a job working over your head. If you've seen The Recruit, that's really all it is. <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a CIA lawyer who's just in over his head trying to figure it out. 
all the way to, you know, we have the number one show on, on Peacock right now, which is Dr. Death. And Dr. Death is a story that, you know, our business models, we, we write about things that we publish in Vanity Fair. The CEO mm-hmm. of my company is one of the, uh, on the mass head of Vanity Fair. And so when you write stories that can tell the people the truth, and sometimes that telling that truth, you know, resets the table and creates justice. And so Dr. Death is a story of us taking down uh, a world-renowned surgeon that was faking his science and killing people. And that turned into just a, a great story for us to do a feature doc on Peacock, but also a scripted version, which is still number one. I checked this morning. So if you haven't, you know, seen it, go check it out. Yeah. Wow. What, a, what an amazing story. And I think about this sometimes. And, and your story sounds pretty similar to mine in terms of like, you didn't start in media or film or in any of that space. You were a lawyer. I was the financial advisor. I was in finance for almost 14 years. The last thing I ever thought is that I'm going to be in media or publishing or anything like that. And I'm just in it. And now when I look back, I, I, I have to do this plug, by the way, Ashley, I'm from Detroit. So come on, go Lions right okay. now, right? So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, growing, yeah. growing, <laughs> growing yeah, up yeah. in Detroit, you know, Southwest side, I mean, Detroit, Detroit and, you know, Cass Tech and went to Michigan State. And, you know, did I ever think that I'd be, of course, happy. Uh, well, I guess I should start off. Did I ever think I'd be seeing my Lions going to the, I don't know, Super Bowl? I mean, not in my lifetime, but I'm really happy about it. But but then the next thing is to really be able to tell these stories and to have a platform to, you know, bring other Detroiters and other individuals that are from a city that maybe don't, or from an inner city, not just Detroit, but you know, across the country that don't always get a shot to maybe even be on media or be interviewed or do these other things. I'm just curious from your standpoint, now that you maybe have a little bit of context of my background, like what's the importance of a platform? Like what does that mean to you, an importance of a platform and using it to empower others? The reason that Dr. King and I bought P3 was we needed a platform. I mean, there's a lot of people who want to start a production company from scratch and it's hard, right? Because you got it's hard to create, you know. Only so many Tyler Perry's, man. That's hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's and, hard. And Only so many Tyler Perry's. Right, and he spent a lot of time dressed as a six foot six woman to get mm-hmm. there, you know. Mm-hmm. And so he, he came up the hard way. But you know, yeah. for us, you know, we wanted to buy access, so we raised the capital to buy P3 because P3 was embedded inside of Disney, and and we saw that having being incubated in Disney and seeing the stories of, of Pixar of being the small, you know, company that gets brought inside. We Man. saw a path that, that, that the Disney platform for us having a first look deal with them and having our offices inside the Burbank office in the animation building, you know, on mm-hmm. the on the set gave us the platform we wanted to to have the credibility in the space to create these types of shows. So platform is everything. Credibility of the platform is everything. Because, you know, you I, I literally just, you know, left Sundance last night. And it's just mm. so when you're surrounded by people that do independent work like this, and that's my, my business model. I like to independently fund my films so I can control the content in the series uh, a lot of times. So when we do these networking things, you have people who are like, look, I want to get involved and invest in and in this type of content, how do I do it? Well, it, it, you got to find people that know what they're doing. They have a way of making you money. And I can't tell yeah. investors this is a good investment unless I have a great access to for 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 distribution and for it to get bought, right? So yep. the platform is everything. So you, you bring in the investors, but you also got to have the way of, of distributing it so you can tell the story. And that is what the intersection of doing good and doing well is. You can do well by making sure you can make money off of great investments that are also doing good for this world at the same time. Yeah, and one of the ways that I look at it, and I don't I don't necessarily always see everybody make this connection, but but I know your your ba- your background with the SBA and even, you know, the White House as a White House policy advisor for entrepreneurship and innovation. I mean, your your resume goes on and on, so <laughs> but looking at platform, I always I often think of it as almost especially when you when you purchase one as as leverage. Like you're, you're compressing time, you're getting leverage because, you know, reach and all and the infrastructure, that all matters. And on the other side of that, to kind of juxtapose, especially for entrepreneurs that aren't in media and not saying that everybody needs to raise money, not saying everybody needs to borrow money. But for those that have ambition of 
you know, scaling a business or something else. I mean, when, like to do it the, the way that maybe some of our, maybe the, the way that some of our individuals did it in the past, and I'll, I'll speak for my own community, where they didn't have either have access to capital or have access to the knowledge of how to use capital. I find in my community, or at least the entrepreneurs I grew up around, like they were kind of, they didn't really understand leverage and what that meant to, you know, have access to capital, borrow, deploy, grow, scale, like some of these things did it. They were more worried about, I mean, first, you know, for some of the first generation immigrant families, the number one thing was for, for many in my area, at least was how, how do we survive? Right. So can, can you talk a little bit about just kind of like this concept of leverage and really when you're thinking about access to capital, how for those that it makes sense, uh, you you leading a bank and a fund, like why, how it can make sense for businesses to, to consider yeah, sure. that. Yeah, sh- sure, sure thing. And first I, I want to say, you know, my background is very diverse and I can say that yeah. the people I work with, we all come from like a, just, we've done a lot of different things and that's very helpful yeah. to an entrepreneur because you got to, you got to figure out multiple ways of fixing a problem. I couldn't have asked. I could ask that question. I just asked you to few people, very few people, but you have yeah. a diverse background enough to know yeah. where I'm going. Like very yeah, few but, people but would have caught that. <laughs> and, and having a diverse background from being a lawyer to working at the state mm-hmm. department at the white house, mm-hmm. all that just gives you different ways of solving problems. Cause you get putting completely different circumstances with completely different rules. And so when you yeah. talk about, you know, debt and, and, and leverage, that's really just two different worlds have two different, you know, just ways of looking at things. So like from a banking side, and you're right, I, I ran the Small Business Administration for a fourth of the United States. And from a traditional debt perspective, you know, a lot of people shy away from it. If you're in a, if you think like, you know, well, banks don't really want to give me loans unless I can prove I don't need a loan, right? And that's usually the rule. It's like, I got to show them I don't need the money and then they'll give it to me. Yep. And But I think that there's ways that if you have the right help, and you have like a retail or a really consumer facing business, those are good, right? If you're touching people every day, then debt businesses are good because cash flow can be quantified very easily. And, and you can, those are, is a good way to go. But when you look at VC stuff, it's like you may not touch people for a while. You know, if you, if you're going to not touch people for a while and you need funding that's going to get you development and research and all the things before you actually are going to make some money. Then venture capital is always going to be the best place to go. And with venture capital, you can do you can still do debt; it's just more expensive, and you can still do, and you can do equity. So I I like to you know I'm one of the few people that is in the banking world and on in the VC world because they, the two don't normally mix because they have totally different yeah. risk calculations, right? Banks are far more conservative, but for some businesses, especially in the retail consumer facing world, they're great because. The SBA loan is the government guarantees your loan. Like the government goes in with you and basically says, look, if this goes bad, then I'll, we'll pay for it. And that's a risk that makes the bank want to, you know, not mind taking a risk on you because you want to start a new pizza shop or you want to start a new just whatever, you know, car detail shop or whatever it could be. That's fine because the government is going to back you on that. And then we help people do that. We want to help people understand how to make that process simple. But at the same time, for venture capital, it's a tough world out there. It's, and that's why I appreciate Payam and, and Chirag and the groups that like this because, you know, there's a lot of venture capitalists out there who might not have the ethics that have to come with banking that I like, you know, um, because some people just want to come in, you know, tell you they'll fund your business and, and not have the best intentions for you. Mm-hmm. So finding good people who actually want to see their founders succeed, who don't want to take advantage of them, but want to see them do well because they know their mission is going to wake the, make the world better. That is a, a growing niche in the community, but one that can never be big enough because yeah. uh, far too many times people shy away from taking VC money because they just there's a trust factor there. They're rightfully so just because so many yeah. stories have been told about people not wanting to do the right thing for the right cause. Mm-hmm. That's great. Last question. I pre- really do appreciate you coming on, and we won't go coming on. I know you just got off. I think you just got off a of red eye, right? You just, you just got, yeah, man. I just got back from Sundance this man. morning. So yeah, man, that's <laughs> why you sound good. Ago. You didn't sleep. You just came from Sundance. No that's sleep, why. No. Okay, no. <laughs> no <laughs> all right. Well, we well, don't last sleep question. here, man. Like, we don't sleep here at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, last question. 
this concept of, and I know one of the one of the things, one of the slants that that all of the things that you're doing are definitely in one way, shape, or form, right? You're women, minority owned, through your partnerships, of course, but then also, you know, the communities you're trying to help. Maybe can you just talk a little bit about the importance of lifting others up, especially some of those that maybe may not have access to some of the same things that, let's just say, mainstream always that typically does. Yeah, for sure. You know, for for those that are just looking for a way out of working for somebody and they believe in their heart, they can work for themselves and do their job better. Traditional debt is just a a great vehicle to change, you know, to break cycles of poverty, to break people out of cycles of not having a life they want to live. Some people just do better as an entrepreneur. They just think their lifestyle is better. The work is harder. If you think it's easier than working for somebody, that's wrong. (laughs) <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> anybody no no master you haven't listened to my show yet i'm sure you will but one day but no we don't talk like that over here we know it's yeah, always it's, yeah, it's yeah. grimy it's always i'm like that. why you tell me why yeah. you want to be an entrepreneur i say no don't do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> man like, I, like I, at this point you know people ask me like i, I have no idea what day it is because it doesn't matter i'm going to work today <laughs> and so, and so, oh that's awesome so, i've heard it, that it's one work day <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's not, it doesn't matter at all. It's all, only that matters what's open or what's not open for me to go get what I want, do what I want to do. That's the only thing that matters. So the work for me, it, it, it always evolves around, you know, I having a partner whose father was such a big part of, of our world's legacy, you know, taking, you know, Dr. King was is an American hero, but he's a global hero. I mean, he took, you oh, know, yeah. the work of Gandhi and in India and, and took the caste system and, and was able to show that what was happening in India was the exact same caste system that was called Jim Crow in our country. And at 15 years old, he decided to break the back of Jim Crow, and he was going to study how Gandhi did it. And he brought that to the United States, and he opened up a door that allowed women and minority-owned business owners to put their foot into the to soil of capitalism in a real way. Because just to be honest, you know, our country has has yet to truly practice capitalism. We still live in a counterfeit capitalist system to where if you don't give access to everybody to have the same shot, then that's not really capitalism. That's not really giving a free market freedom unless you give people the freedom to get access to the capital they need to chase their dreams. Until we can live in a country where you can wake up every day and not worry about the color of your skin or your gender and how that's going to affect your ability to feed your family, to chase your dreams, and to live in this world in your most authentic self, then we're truly not in a free market. And we're trying to get there. And so all the things that I that I'm talking about from banking to venture capital is to truly, you know, make this country what it's supposed to be, which is, you know, free markets with free people. And we're still trying to get there, but we can't rely on anybody else to do it. We have to have meetings like we're having, you know, this week to talk about how do we pull our talent and our time to create marketplaces so that the best ideas can still win no matter who brought them. And I think that's why this is important. Amen. Ashley, if somebody wants to follow your journey and they want to, you know, connect, what's the best way for them to do that? You know, I'm on LinkedIn like a lot of folks, so you can find me. Ashley D is my middle initial, Bell, on LinkedIn, Ashley D. Bell on Insta and Facebook. So look forward to staying in touch with everybody and Ashley Bell R on Twitter. All right. Wonderful. Well, well, hey, appreciate that. I'm going to go follow for sure. Everybody else go do the same. And speaking of our audience, if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know why. Hit that subscribe button. Come on. It's not it's not going to bite. Hit the subscribe button. We have many more mission based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. Ashley, really, it has been a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you at the event. Hey, brother. I appreciate you. Take care. See you soon.